I mean, you know, I, want, I wanted to ask you one thing about, and maybe you can clear a lot of doubts here about from Levan's photos when he was 80, 85 kilos, when he was 17 years old. So if there is a 200, and this question is also coming from RBJ's comment, when he said that before he started juicing, Levan was a much smaller guy than himself. So RBJ is what, 220, 25 pounds? Yeah. And what, where do you think a 210 pound Levan, who is 23, 24 years old, can get with all of the stuff he can take at GH or everything where can a 210 pound guy land if he decides to go all out while still being as fit, as active as Levan. So your question is about, about Levan or about RVG going back in time? About anyone, like a 220 pounds guy, how far can he take it in terms of weight? This is a great question, Pradeep. We can answer, uh, this is a great question. What the audience should think about when they think about this, and I know this because not just, this is not because of academic evidence or anything like that. It's because of, you know, watching bodybuilders and, and talking to bodybuilders for years. You can see certain guys, they'll look very athletic. They look like they have good genetics, like Lachlan or whatever. And one guy, he's like Lachlan, but he's 180 pounds. You put him on steroids, you put him on growth hormone. And he might already be muscular, but he doesn't change much. Put him on high high dose food. He doesn't change as much. Another guy might be. He looks like he's less less athletic, less gifted. Like uh, if the audience wants to look at a guy uh, currently in bodybuilding, the guy who's ranked fifth. You know, there's a guy called um, called uh, Nick Walker. If you looked at him when he first started competing, you would think this guy is not going to be a big guy. But then he, what they call mutation, he grew so much from the response to the drugs and the food. So there's a different response to the drugs depending on the person. Now, which genes affect this? The IGF-1 receptor. So for example, I have an IGF-1 receptor that's def that's de de um, defective. It doesn't cause a uh, increase in IGF-1 signaling when it's agonized as well as maybe Artem's. So there's the IGF-1 receptor. The androgen receptor, the main one for testosterone, has 90 different polymorphisms that affect how it responds to drugs or to agonism. So we have all these genetic predispositions we don't really know about until we actually use the things. So there can be some guy who's a five foot four, Lee Priest, looks like a guy who, you five four, you would think there's a midget. There's not a guy who's gonna respond to a lot of growth hormone and stuff like that. But Lee Priest, not a midget, it's a bad word now, but Lee Priest had 22 inch arms at five four. He's a guy who grows from anything. He's famous in bodybuilding. Take a small amount of steroids, 200 milligrams, and he grows bigger than anybody else. So it depends on your genetics. Levon seems to be, to me, somebody who had the perfect genetics to do that. He grew like the way cancers grow. Like he just, just kept dividing and dividing and his arms, everything split apart. He can't grow taller, but he grew wider in every way. So you see also Siplenkov was like that naturally though. If you look at Siplenkov originally, he looked like he had a growth hormone issue. He looked like a giant that was a bit short. He has voice also was, so it depends on your genetics, the, the short answer.